With the announcement of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door coming to the Switch next year, it has everyone wondering all sorts of things about the game. And one thing in particular that keeps coming up are the changes. What exactly will get changed from the original game? Will something previously changed for localization be changed once again? We've already seen evidence of this, with Tech reflecting his original Japanese design with the red light, rather than the localized blue light. So we put together a list of details that could be changed in this new release of the game. So there's an abandoned house in Rogueport that in the Japanese version is even darker than in the international release. There's a chalk outline of a toad surrounded by blood. So that's pretty dark. And despite the noose still being back in Rogueport, I don't think this is going to make it back in the remake. The age ratings haven't changed that much, and I'm not sure Nintendo likes the idea of depicting the murder site of a toad. Moving on to something in a bit of a lighter note, we have these pair of boos found in Rogueport that wear cat ears, but in the original Japanese version, they actually wore bunny ears. So which version are we going to see in the remake? They could just change one of them and have both, making it easier to tell the two apart perhaps. Moving on to the parrot under Creepy Steeple, who says many different things when talked to. But one thing in particular is Shine Get, which is the text displayed when getting a Shine Sprite in Mario Sunshine, specifically from the Japanese version of the game. But could we see it get changed to something else now? Mario Sunshine was included in Super Mario 3D All-Stars a couple years ago on the Switch, so it's possible they could keep this. Some people would still get it. Speaking of things people may not get though, we have the talking crows in Twilight Town. And these crows talked about various things, from instant messaging, to fiber optics, to depleting fossil fuels and the alternative energy options. You know, among many other things. And some of these, now, 20 years later, are obviously dated. Since we know some script changes are on the way, we'll probably see these crows talk about new, different things. Though, part of it would be kind of funny if they were kept exactly the same, admittedly. Moving on to this Toad Kid in Petalburg, who talks about various intelligent system games. Namely, Fire Emblem. Of course, he also talks about Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, and even teases a Paper Mario game with a focus on Luigi. Now, these are all cute and fun, but definitely dated. So could he talk about different games now? It would be funny if he talked about the most recent Fire Emblem, being Fire Emblem Engage, or some underrated Nintendo title, like ARMS. Next up, looking at a different perspective for things, the Japanese version may see changes that were made to the original international versions. For example, some recipe combinations were different, and some items sold for different prices, along with many other smaller changes. So now, players in Japan may have a more unified experience with the rest of the world. Moving on, let's talk about Toadsworth. Will he actually appear? He was in the game's intro originally, though we haven't seen him yet in the first trailer. Honestly, he probably will be here, given how faithful this remake has proven to be already. And he's been in other remakes and re-releases over the years too. But I mean, can you blame us for being concerned? We had a whole missing in action about him recently after all. Of course, if he is in the Thousand Year Door remake, it just adds to his more recent appearances, all being in remakes and re-releases. Finally, let's talk about Vivian. I wanted to save her for last because this is an especially touchy case. So Vivian's character has some different depictions in different versions of the game. In the Japanese and Italian versions, Vivian is depicted as transgender, identifying as a woman, but her sisters misgender her and refer to her as a man. But in the rest of the versions of the game, all references to this are gone. Instead, they just call her ugly, for example. Now, 2024 is a very different time than 2004 was. So how will it play out this time around? Speaking as a non-binary individual, I'm personally very curious how Nintendo will choose to play things out this time. And it's definitely top of my list of one of the things I'm most curious about with this game. And with that, those are our bunch of potential changes to Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Are there any changes you expect to see in the remake? 
Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and stay tuned to Game Explain for plenty more on Paper Mario, and other things gaming as well, of course. Until next time, farewell.